know that there is at least one person, that being the driver. Unclear if that is a male or female driver. Uh, the windows are very tinted. He does have limo tint on that car. So, unfortunately, I can't really see uh, from this angle whether or not there are any passengers. He's slowing down here a touch. I'm going to pull out to see what he's trying to do. We don't know where this car is registered to. So, if, in fact, he is the owner, uh, we would be able to run the plates and uh, figure out where the car is registered to. And then that might give us an indication as to where he may be trying to get back to. We often see in some of these high-speed pursuits that suspects uh, tend to go back to an area that is familiar to them. Uh, the entire time that we've uh, been listening to this pursuit over our scanners, we know that he has been in the Devonshire division of the LAPD. Of course, that is a division that is in the northern part of the San Fernando Valley. And uh, we've never heard him pick up the freeway either. We've only heard him on surface streets. He's on San Fernando Road now. Uh, again, uh, he's slowing down his speeds just a touch, which is good. Uh, but unfortunately, he's the bad part is he's not stopping. And so that's definitely uh, what the LAPD would like to see him do. But... <laughs> but as he continues to run red lights here and continues to drive uh, so erratically, driving on the wrong side of the road, it really is creating such a danger for motorists here in the uh, Porter Ranch, uh, Chatsworth area. He's going uphill here a touch. Going to pull the shot out just a touch so we can see where he's at. You can see those uh, railroad tracks just on the right side of your screen. That's San Fernando Road. Uh, that is a road that runs... Uh, through the entire San Fernando Valley. So he's running alongside that right now. Uh, that portion of San Fernando Road is just on the uh, east side of the five freeway. There are point. oh, smoking a little bit there. Maybe his car starting to give out on him. We'll see. And look at that. There is a passenger. We actually can see that there is somebody sitting in the front passenger seat. So that confirms a question that we had earlier. We weren't sure if he had any passengers. Now we know that he does. Uh, we know that there is at least one passenger sitting right up front with him. Uh, we don't know if there's anyone in the back again because those windows are so darkly tinted. We can't take a good look at any of the rear seats, but we uh, were able to take a look at that front uh, seat, and we can tell that there is, in fact, a passenger as well as, of course, the driver on this pursuit out of the Devonshire Division of the LAPD that has now made its way into Silmar. Whoa, gosh. <laughs> it's so dangerous. He keeps running these lights, uh, keeps r driving on the wrong side of the road, high speed. That was uh, on, that was Glen Oaks that he just passed. He's currently on Polk. Polk is actually a street that will take him up to the 210 freeway if he continues heading in this easterly direction. Uh, if he does decide to pick up the freeway, that will be the first time that we do, in fact, see him take the freeway. We've only seen him on surface streets this entire time. Again, we're still working on, try on getting uh, what the one is uh, on this vehicle straddling that center lane there. He was coming up on a little bit of traffic there on Polk and decided to take that center lane. Oh, wrong side of the road here. Oh making a turn here. I believe it's going to be Foothill Boulevard. He's going to pass right under us, so you will see the car uh, go right under us, uh, but we'll get it back for you in a more ideal uh, shot in just a moment. You see it there coming back out and uh, continuing, yes, on Foothill Boulevard. Foothill Boulevard through this stretch uh, of the San Fernando Valley actually runs uh, adjacent to the 210 freeway. Uh, northbound Foothill from us. Oh, he just clipped that car. Oh, gosh. Uh, feel bad for some of the people that, I mean, that are in this guy's ways because clearly he does not care about anyone but himself. He just hit that car as he was continuing on Foothill Boulevard. Again, he's uh, just under us for a sec. Uh, we're going to move the shot. Uh, and as you can see, as we move the shot there, we can see that there are, in fact, cruisers directly behind him. And we also see that he just passed over the 210 freeway. So now he's on uh, east of the 210 freeway. Uh, again, a residential area. He has been on the residential area the entire time. Uh, this is a slight uphill drive for him. Uh, just past Gladstone, continuing uh, on the surface streets here. I'm trying to get it for you. It's either going to be Sayre. Uh, po yeah, possibly Sayre, perhaps Hubbard. I'll get you a better cross in just a sec. I think it's Sayre. As he can it, is, it is, in fact, Sayre continuing. Of course, not stopping for any stop signs, not stopping for any red lights. Uh, this kind of seems to be a, a slightly more congested residential area. It seems like there are a lot of cars parked along the street. I uh, noticed some pedestrians out and about on this uh, hot Thursday afternoon. Uh, again, 
not stopping at any of these stop signs. It is really so dangerous. So I really hope that if anyone lives in this area and is listening to our broadcast, just stay inside because this guy is really uh, just creating havoc on the streets here. Uh, nor just uh, off of uh, the 210 freeway, off of Sayard, that's just east of the 210 freeway. Uh, he's not too far from Los Angeles Mission College, but he's actually getting away from that right now. Uh, he's uh, starting to make his way a little bit to the north. Uh, so in this case, he is running uh, north. Uh, so he is running uh, parallel with the 210 freeway uh, as if he were going to head uh, up towards the New Hall area. So uh, it seemed like that street just came to an end there. So he was forced to take a southbound turn here uh, on Astoria, I believe. Let me get a better shot of it for you here. He's, uh, oh. Oh, there we go. He ran over a stop sign. Officers directly behind him. We have a male white shirt running. We do know there's a passenger, but we're going to go ahead and stick with that male, the driver, of course, since we don't know if the passenger really knew uh, that this guy was uh, going to be in a pursuit today. But obviously this guy did because he was the driver. So he is hopping from home to home. He's going to come out right here on the side yard, pa passing through these vehicles here on the front of this home, continuing running white shirt, black shorts, black baseball cap. Coming up to this home here, passing that blue truck. He's going to try to leap over this fence right now. There you go. Oh, look at that. He has quite the good balance, actually, <laughs> as he continues to run away from police here. Uh, it looks like he may be running out of steam here. I see him uh, starting to slow down here on the rear of this home. Hopefully that's these close, these windows and doors are closed and he's not going to be able to get in. And sure enough, it looks like he... It, may have tried to get into that home. The door was closed. He was not able to get in. Pulling up his pants. He forgot his belt today. <laughs> the cops are definitely going to see him from here. The police airship is going to see that white shirt. That is nice and bright, so they are not going to miss sight of him here. Continuing, <laughs> running past this pool. He's definitely slowing down. I know he's tired. He looks tired. He just took a tumble there, uh, fell on that person's flower pot. He's going to try to climb yet over another fence. Again, this is a residential area uh, off of Eldridge, uh, kind of just north of the Los Angeles Mission College. He's going to use this silver dumpster here, oh, to give himself some leverage here so he can climb over this trellis. He was able to hop over, but as you saw in the shot just a few seconds ago, there is a police helicopter right overhead, and he sees him with that bright colored white shirt. It's going to be difficult for him to fact to hide in fact in this area there's a police helicopter as well once again he's just on the other side of that home he's going to come out in just a sec we're going to either see him go uh, into the driveway area or we're going to see him climb into that other home but he's definitely in that side yard that is where we last saw him that is where the airship sees him as well and if you can look at the top of the shot you see that there are in fact some police officers right in the backyard for that home so they're going to start to make their way towards this suspect and there he goes he did come out to the front of the house he's still there he's straddling those two fences he's now again uh, walking the line on top of the fence here he sees those officers. They're, I mean, they're right next to him. There's no way he doesn't see him. And they, in fact, do see him as well. They may be looking at, oh, there we go. He's on the roof now, on the roof. Decided he, his only way out was to take a climb onto the roof. He's now on top of this home. Uh, there's really nowhere for him to go at this point. The police airship is overhead. They're on the loudspeaker. They're telling this guy to give up. Uh, and that would really be the ideal situation. His hands are up, but I don't know that he's necessarily giving up. It actually looks like he's trying to have a friendly conversation with the officers here uh, as he uh, continues to try to get away. But he's uh, kind of got nowhere to go at this point. He's on top of this uh, single-family home uh, here uh, off of Eldridge Avenue. That's not quite the cross, but that is the major uh, running through this area of uh, Silmar. We do have officers surrounding every side of this home. And we, of course, have the uh, sheriffs, or not the sheriffs, but we have the LAPD helicopter overhead, rather. And, of course, we have a uh, news chopper four overhead, and we're going to do our best, of course, to not lose him as well. Uh, he continues to gesture towards the officers. He's uh, not quite giving up just yet. Uh, he did take off his baseball cap. We did see him raise his hands, but it, weren't, it wasn't really in a, uh, hey, I'm giving up, uh, take me into custody type of gesture. Uh, so it does look like he's in a friendly conversation with them. <laughs> and, of course, uh, 
he's conversing with them. It's unclear what he's telling them. We, of course, know that the uh, police officers are in all likelihood telling him to just get down, give himself up. Uh, but, of course, he he ran it from the cops for a good little while. He, we saw him do a lot of crazy maneuvers on surface streets, running a lot of red lights. He did hit other vehicles in the course of that pursuit. He drove on the wrong side of the road, uh, ran a number of stop signs. And, of course, we don't know what the original want was on the vehicle as well. So, Or, rather, we don't know what, what was the original reason that the officers uh, tried to pull this guy over. We do see that the officers are, are trying to convince him to come down peacefully. Uh, and time is really on their side because <laughs> the suspect really has no <laughs> nowhere to go at this point. And the officers uh, can always call him backup reinforcement. They can call in additional airships. And now there's a hose. So this is an interesting twist. Uh, he got a hold of a hose somehow. And uh, he did drink from it. Perhaps uh, maybe that was the agreement he came to with the LAPD. Maybe he said, hey, if you pass me a hose and I can take a quick drink, I'll give up. So uh, we don't know exactly what's going on here. But he did uh, take a sip of that water. I'm guessing he was uh, quite thirsty after running away from, from the cops, not only on surface streets, but as well uh, as on foot. And now uh, he continues on the top of this roof. We see all of the officers here in the backyard. Oh, and now, okay, I'm going to pull this shot a little wider because I um, just saw something uh, that I think we may not want to show you. And uh, so we're just going to keep a wide shot here. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it uh, from afar here. <laughs> okay, we're not streaming. Great. Gonna going to keep a, let me see. Hey, Jack, uh, since we're not streaming, do you want me to zoom in? Okay, 10 4. Okay, so we're going to stay about. Uh, this wide. Uh, I was just in conversation with our assignment desk just to make sure that we we weren't uh, showing anything that we didn't want to show you. Uh, but we've kind of come to a, a conclusion that we feel comfortable showing you kind of a medium shot of what the suspect is in fact doing on the roof. Uh, there was a point when he did have a garden hose and that did scare us uh, up here for just a moment. Uh, it seems like he has uh, given up on using that. So uh, that is no longer a factor, as far as we can tell. A little bit uh, to our uh, northwest from here, as well as uh, uh, Los Angeles Mission College. That's just directly south of us as well. And, of course, the 210 freeway is uh, just out my uh, left door. I can see it here. Uh, the pursuit is, and uh, the subsequent standoff is not affecting uh, the freeway whatsoever. I can see that 210 freeway. It is smooth sailing in both directions. But, of course, you do have some people that are going to be driving on the freeway and they're going to see all of the helicopters over the scene and they may uh, slow their speeds down for just a second, but uh, really uh, no traffic uh, tie-ups, uh, at least on the freeway, that is. Um, we, of course, uh, have been uh, on this uh, the entire time uh, and uh, the LAPD airship has also been over the entire time. That light that you see there on the roof is actually the night sun coming from the police helicopter and we also have uh, officers surrounding this home in
Christmas socks. Yankee Mike, Yankee Mike, Tango Charlie, 25, priority message. We are Broad Street in the city centre with a vehicle failing to stop. It's Kilo Yankee, 16, Juliet, Juliet Lima. We are still medium risk, why as he performs an undertake. And we are 7-0 in a 3-0. Confirm the pursuit is authorised, please, why Oh my god, oh my god. Found the police, found the police, found the police. Where? Oh my god. Ambo and fire please, the vehicles that rolled. Fly the car, not the helicopter. Get ahead of him. If you can stay on this side if you're more comfortable, that's fine. Eastbound, eastbound 60 freeway coming up to, uh, it's going to be the 605 in a couple miles. This is going to be. Making that wide sweeping left turn, he's going to be eastbound. I believe this is Montebello, Montebello Boulevard. You see that white vehicle being chased by the police department. This all started in Azusa PD under us at 9 o'clock. David, just hold your position here. He's going to go under us. He's going to come out your side right now. I got, uh, I got a ship over here at my side. You got him? So we got people in the back seat, people, uh, well, the driver in the front seat, the window's down. This is the first we've seen the window's down. So three, three in the vehicle. And it might be the fact that they're just running out of gas or maybe they're just playing with the officers here. 
but you know this pursuit's been going on for a while. Maybe they're just running out of gas. Oh, here's the pit. There's the pit. That's going to end it. So they gave him a chance to pull over. He could have, like you said, and now they're going to have him at gunpoint. We're going to come out to a wider shot and show you the scene here with the all the units in place. West Covina also on the right-hand side there, that WC, that's a West Covina unit. Azusa PD 